So with the launch of Diablo 4 being so close, I wanted to do an overview of all five classes to give you a good idea of what all these classes have to offer so you can make the most informed decision on what class you're going to want to play first or what class you're going to want to main. And then as an extension of that, I also wanted to do a video making a theory crafted build for each one of these classes so you can get a good idea of some builds are going to be possible with those classes more into the end game. So in this video, I want to do an overview of the class I plan on maining being the Necromancer. Now the Necromancer is going to be Diablo 4's summoner class but it's also going to be heavily mixed in with being a dark caster and there's going to be a lot of build possibilities being a full summoner, being a full caster, or having a mix of the two. And one of the most important pieces to start off with the Necromancer is the Necromancer's unique class mechanic called the Book of the Dead. Now the Book of the Dead is going to be the main way the Necromancer summons their minions and customizes their summons. So being a level one necromancer, you start off with a summon skeleton ability, and this is going to both summon whatever skeleton warrior you choose, and later on, it's going to summon whatever skeleton mage you choose. Now there's going to be three different total types of summons in the Book of the Dead. There's going to be those skeletal warriors, the skeletal mages, and golems. Now once you get golems, that's going to be its own separate ability, but all three of these categories are going to have multiple different pieces to customize your summons. And this is going to start off with the three different types of summons in these categories. So for instance, under skeletal warriors, you could have skeletal skirmishers that do 30% more damage, but have 15% reduced life. You could have skeletal defenders that are shield bearers with 15% increased life, or you could have skeletal reapers that wield a powerful scythe that have a special wind of attack and also deal AOE damage. So once you choose the specific type of skeletal warrior you want, you also have two different upgrades you get to choose between for that summoned warrior. So for instance, on the skirmishers, you could choose between upgrade one, which allows you to raise one additional skirmisher, or you can have upgrade two, which each time you critically strike, your skirmisher's next attack will critically strike and it will deal 50% more critical strike damage. This can only happen once every three seconds. So you get to choose one of these two different upgrades. And every single one of these different summons have their own different upgrades you get to choose between, but you can only use one different type of summon at a time, so you couldn't use defenders and skirmishers at the same time. And then past this, there is also a sacrifice category for every summon in the Book of the Dead. Now what this is going to do is permanently sacrifice that summon. So if you choose a sacrifice for a skeletal warrior, you're no longer able to use any skeletal warrior summon, but you're going to get a permanent buff. So say if you sacrifice your skeletal skirmishers, you now have 5% increased critical strike chance, but you can no longer summon those skeletal warriors. And this is going to be a big way of how you create less summon focused builds. So once you're a certain level, you could actually go through and get a permanent sacrifice buff from skeletal warriors, skeletal mages, and golems, and just be a full dark caster build. Or you could use all three of these summons to be a full summoner, or you could mix and match. You could say keep golems and skeletal mages, but have a sacrifice for skeletal warriors. So there's going to be a lot of mixing and matching depending on what type of build you're trying to use. The first of these categories being basic skills. And the basic skills for the necromancer are going to be very important for generating the class's main resources, being either essence or corpses. An example of a basic skill is reap, which generates four essence per enemy hit, has a lucky hit chance of 18%, sweep a scythe in front of you, dealing some damage, hitting an enemy with reap increases your damage reduction by 15% for two seconds. And this is going to be a very popular skill just because it gives more essence the more enemies hit. If you're facing really big groups of enemies, you can fill up your essence very quickly. And this consistently gives you that damage reduction, which is going to be very good in any points in the game. An example of an upgrade is if an enemy hit by reap dies within two seconds, you gain 30% attack speed for three seconds. Now you don't need to kill the enemy with reap. They just need to die within two seconds of getting hit by that and it gives you this massive attack speed buff and this is also another reason why this skill is going to be used so often especially if you're farming big groups of enemies or you're doing specific dungeons that have a lot of groups of enemies reap is going to be 
incredibly strong. And next up, we have core skills. And for most builds, this is where your primarily used skill and highest damage skill is going to come from. Core skills have a much higher damage, but have an essence cost to go along with that damage. So this is where mixing in your basic skills is going to be very important to keep regenerating your essence from those basic skills to use it on your core skills. And an example of this is Blood Surge, which has an essence cost of 27, lucky at chance of 22%. You draw blood from enemies dealing damage and you expel a Blood Nova dealing a much larger amount of damage. Blood Surge's damage Nova is increased by 10% per enemy drained up to 50%. So this is basically a big AoE skill that sucks in some blood from enemies doing a little bit of damage. Then it lets out a Blood Nova doing a lot more damage and the more enemies hit by the initial damage increases the damage of the Blood Nova. And this is actually one of the main skills I use when creating builds in the public beta. Very good skill in general that just gets stronger with the more enemies you're actually able to hit. And an upgrade for this is that Blood Surge heals you for 2.5% of your maximum life when drawing blood from enemies. If four or more enemies are drawn from, then heal for an additional 2.5% of your maximum life. So now if this skill hits anything, you heal for 2.5% of your maximum life. And then if it hits four or more enemies, you also heal an additional 2.5%. So if you're using this in an AOE situation, you're always healing for 5% of your maximum life. And this type of scaling being based off your maximum life is going to mean this upgrade scales very well into the end game. And this is also a skill you can cast pretty quick and mixing it in with some of the other powers and effects is going to allow this upgrade to heal you for a lot more. And next up, we have the macabre and corpse categories, and this is where the necromancer skill tree gets a little bit weird because there's two separate sections or categories of the skill tree that have both macabre and corpse skills in them. So in game, when you're looking at the skill tree, you start off with basic skills, you go to core skills, then you go to the first category that has macabre and corpse skills in it, then you go to curse skills, then you go to the second category that has both macabre and corpse skills. So just to make this a little bit easier, we're just going to go over a macabre skill then go over a corpse skill but keep in mind in game the categories are going to look a little bit mixed up so for a macabre skill we have a blood mist cooldown of 20 seconds lucky at chance of 10 percent you disperse into a bloody mist becoming immune for three seconds your movement speed is reduced by 20 percent and you periodically deal damage to enemies and heal for 0.5 percent of your maximum life so essentially what this is is an immunity skill which immunity means you can be affected by nothing you're immune to damage, nothing can attack you, nothing can hurt you for that full three seconds. You're slightly slower and there's going to be a small AoE. So when you're touching any enemies with that AoE, you're dealing damage over time and healing for some of your max health over time as well. Now this is going to be one of the strongest defensive skills in the game, especially for hardcore characters because you legitimately just go fully immune to everything for three seconds and it only has a 20 second cooldown at base. So this is just going to be ridiculously strong for basically any build that is having issues surviving or like mentioned for any hardcore build. And an upgrade for this is casting a skill that overpowers, reduces the cooldown of Blood Mist by two seconds and the Necromancer actually has a lot of overpower abilities and overpower is just basically a chance to deal more damage. You also have scaling on how much overpower does and anytime you hit an overpower, it shows up as a blue damage number. And like mentioned, Necromancer does have a bunch of effects in their skill tree that actually allows them to overpower more consistently or in a more deterministic way. And then we have a corpse skill called Corpse Tendril. This has an 11 second cooldown, 22% lucky hit chance. Veins burst out of a corpse, pulling in enemies, stunning them for three seconds and dealing some damage. And this does not consume the corpse. So essentially how this works is you target a corpse on the ground that was either created by defeating an enemy or created by another necromancer skill. And from that corpse, it pulls all enemies in an area around it to it, stunning them all and dealing damage. And it doesn't actually consume that corpse. So 
this is an AoE CC that also does some decent damage on a relatively low cooldown. So I think this is also going to be used in quite a lot of builds once we get into the end game just because of the stun. Even if you take out the damage, there's a lot of builds that would want to use this specifically for that stun because that stun's going to be incredibly strong. Any AoE CC, especially AoE stuns, are going to be very good. And an upgrade is enemies who are in range of corpse tendrils are slowed by 50% before being pulled. Now this is just adding more CC and can help you pull in even more enemies. So if enemies are trying to run away from it, or if you're in PvP and enemies are, are trying to run away from it, this 50% slow could potentially not allow them to move away quick enough to not get pulled in and stunned. So just adding more CC and making the skill even easier to use. And next up we have the curse category that is the smallest skill category for the necromancer, but I do think these curses are very strong and you probably are going to see most builds have at least one of these as a filler spell. And our example is Iron Maiden, essence cost of 9, curse the target area, enemies afflicted by Iron Maiden take damage each time they deal direct damage, last 10 seconds. So now you're cursing all enemies to when they hit anything or deal any damage, they're also going to be taking damage themselves. And this is also going to be really good on a necromancer because say you're using like a summoner build, you can curse all enemies and then those enemies are just going to be hitting your summons, not hitting you, and then just taking damage from hitting those summons. And not only that, but there's also quite a lot of effects and buffs for thorns on the necromancer. So you could be running some type of thorns build where your summons are also going to get some of that thorns using iron mated, then they're going to be taking damage from hitting your summons and also damaging themselves from trying to hit your summons. So it's going to kind of be like they're taking two different hits of thorns damage. And then an upgrade is Iron Maiden no longer costs essence. Instead, gain five essence for each enemy cursed does not work on enemies who are already cursed by Iron Maiden. And this is incredibly strong and I use this in the beta as well. And when you're facing big groups of enemies, you use this, it costs no essence, and you can just completely fill up your essence meter by using this on a big group of enemies. It's still going to be useful on bosses, but for big groups, this is going to give you just so much essence. And I think this specific upgrade is going to cause Iron Maiden to be used in quite a lot of endgame builds. And then finally, we have the ultimate category that's going to work a little bit differently than all other categories, because every other category for the Necromancer, you can mix and match any amount of skills from any of those categories you want. You could use four basic skills if you wanted, you could use four core skills, but for the ultimate category, you can only use one at a time, and these are going to have very long cooldowns, but be incredibly strong. So an example, is Army of the Dead, a 90 second cooldown, lucky at chance of 59%, call forth the Deep Buried Dead. Volatile skeletons emerge over the next 7 seconds that explode when around enemies, dealing a large amount of damage. So you're just summoning a bunch of these volatile skeletons that all run around trying to blow up on enemies. And again, very long cooldown of 90 seconds. And an upgrade of this is when Army of the Dead's volatile skeletons explode, they have a 15% chance to leave behind a corpse. So now this can also be a decent way to spawn in some corpses, which is going to be one of your main resources as a necromancer. But there is actually one more category past the ultimates called the capstone category. Now this doesn't house any active skills, but you get a choice of one of four very strong passive effects. So there's four different passives you can choose from, but you can only choose one at a time. And the example is Kalen's Edict. After you have not taken damage in the last three seconds, your minions gain 15% attack speed. While you have at least seven minions, this bonus is double. So this is obviously going to be for a full summoner build. You're going to have a lot more minions to not be taking any damage for them to tank everything. And when you don't take damage for three seconds, they gain 15% attack speed. And if you have at least seven summons, this is doubled up to 30%. So this is going to be incredibly massive for any build that uses at least seven minions. And it's also just going to be good for full minion builds because more minions equals more things to soak the damage for you. So you cannot take damage and have this effect up more of the time. Now, once you get into the end game and get to level 50, you're also going to unlock the Paragon boards, which are all also class specific. And I don't want to go super in depth to all the options that Paragon boards have. So I just want to go over all of 
the different Paragon board options you have and go over their legendary nodes, which is what these different boards are actually named after. So first off, we have a Blood Begets Blood. Blood Orbs grant 5% increased damage up to 15% for 5 seconds. Then we have the Blood Bath board, and the legendary is attacks that are guaranteed to overpower deal 50% increased overpower damage. So for the Necromancer, there's actually going to be a good chunk of effects that guarantee overpower damage. Then we have a Bone Graph. Hitting enemies with bone skills increases your damage by 1% and your maximum essence by 3 for 8 seconds, stacking up to 7.5% increased damage and 22.5 maximum essence. So just using bone skills, you're going to get the stacking damage and stacking essence increase. And actually increasing your maximum essence is going to play a pretty big part in some specific necromancer skills. Then we have Cult Leader. Your minions deal 10% increased damage for each minion type you have active. This only applies to skeletal warriors, mages, and golems. So up to 30% damage increase, basically just for being a summoner build. Then we have Flesh Eater. Consuming 5 corpses grants 40% increased damage for 6 seconds. And this is also going to be massive because you can constantly consume corpses with your summon skill that you summon skeletal warriors and skeletal mages from because if you have the maximum amount of those summons, it'll actually summon this skeletal priest that gives all of your summons a short term damage buff. So you're also going to be able to just spam that to get this legendary node buff as well. And then we have Hawking Monstrosity. Your golem has 30% increased maximum life and deals 30% increased damage. So just a massive buff to golems. Then we have Scent of Blood. With at least two corpses nearby, you gain 15% damage reduction. With no corpses nearby, you deal 15% increased damage. So this is actually a pretty high skill cap ability because you can kind of choose which buff of this to get with your positioning and just using up those corpses on other abilities. Then finally, we have Wither. Your shadow damage over time effects have a 5% chance to deal 50% bonus damage each time they deal damage. This chance is increased by 1% and bonus damage is increased by 2.5% for each 50 willpower you have. So this is technically an infinite scaling ability. You're obviously not going to be able to get infinite willpower, but if you were to build going a crazy amount of willpower, you could increase this very, very heavily. And I think there's very much going to be builds that are kind of built around this legendary node. Now that's all the Paragon boards. And keep in mind, every Paragon board has one legendary power and the board and these powers are going to share the same name. So I think the Necromancer is going to have a lot of build potential with the possible mixing of summoning skills, casting skills, and just being able to very freely go more in one direction or have a good mix of the two. But that's all I want to go over, so thanks for watching.